Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Cheaper Than Therapy. We have, I'm excited actually, we have a really exciting guest today um, <laughs> that's going to talk about hopefully with us a topic that I know Danae's pretty obsessed with right now and something that I'm just curious to learn more about. Um, and I've been, you know, trying to wrap my head around, I guess, in a lot of ways. And so I'm, I'm hoping that this conversation, I come out on the other end, maybe with a deeper and and more um, cohesive understanding so that when Danae's talking to me about it, I can be like, "Uh uh-huh, I'm (laughs) tracking. (laughs) Um, Today, we're talking to Laura Grant, and she is a spiritual teacher and an intuitive coach who utilizes a combination of her backgrounds in music, business, education, and studies in spiritual science to provide service for humanity. Through her own Mm. personal experiences, she has a level of spiritual understanding that is ideal for supporting others with balancing their masculine and feminine energies, clearing ancestral patterns, and elevating their frequency. Laura is an awakened feminine who is inspired by a higher power and dedicated to assisting with the ongoing evolution of the human collective. Laura, welcome. We're so excited to have you on the pod. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, so Laura, as Vanessa mentioned, I have become increasingly a little bit obsessed, to be honest, with these masculine and feminine dynamics. Um, I do a lot of work with couples and, you know, there's so much about these dynamics that, um, has just really given me a new lens with which to view relationships and um, understand what I see happening and playing out between couples a lot of times. And, you know, one of the things that I talked to Vanessa about is that sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to wrap your head around what I'm saying, or it just feels like it's not concise and clear. And I feel like you do such a phenomenal job um, with your posts and with your work of like really breaking down in a way that's clear and concise these dynamics and what you're talking about. So first of all, thank you for doing that. And (laughs) also, um, I would just love to hear how you came to this place where this is something that is your work and that you're, you're sharing with all of us. So can you give us a little bit of your background and your origin story? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and I get that question a lot. People say, well, how did you get to this wisdom, right? Like, where's mm-hmm. this coming from? What is this? You know, <laughs> um, so it's been a long process. And it actually, you know, I always say it starts back to when I was like 12, 13 years old. So I started, I was a singer and a songwriter and a rapper. And I started writing songs um, about pretty much the, the human experience. It's like the first time my heart was broken. I was like, mm-hmm. a middle schooler, right? Um, so I started writing those songs, getting into that poetry, writing a lot. Um, and I, I didn't know at the time, but I was really, you know, like tapping into these collective themes um, and these archetypes that we see play out between um, not just men and women, but masculine and feminine energy. But of course, you know, as like a 13, 14 year old, I didn't know that. I was just, it was just an outlet to deal with the pain. So it wasn't until I got a little bit older, um, I decided to go back to school. I got my master's in like child development. So I started studying like, you know, attachment theory. Um, and I started looking at, you know, how these energies connect to the way that humans develop, right? How they, in- the interplay between the masculine and feminine and how that helps us to uncover our shadow and do all of that necessary inner work to get to this place of really um, interdependent interdependence because really when I was doing all those songs it was based off of this codependency right um this yearning this longing feeling like somebody else is going to complete you and getting hurt by that process so um then I threw in some studies in spiritual science I studied a lot of anthroposophy um so Rudolf Steiner's work if you're familiar with him Mm -hmm. um and that kind of just all came together with all of my life experiences and me learning about um you know stepping out of my own codependent cycles and it all merged together and it turned into what I do now. Hmm. Yeah. When did you start taking it and kind of like, um, like working with clients on it? Like, I guess, I guess, how does it, I, I'm trying to think of how to word this. Like, how does it show up for you where you're able to sit with somebody and then take all of these gifts and this knowledge that you have and then help somebody work through, let's say a relational struggle or like something they're going through that they're trying to, to work on. That makes sense. Yeah, it was a very, yeah, that totally makes sense. Okay. It was a very organic process Yeah. Um, where it began, you know, like people coming to me. So at first it just started where I had just had this blog, right? Where I was putting out all the spiritual 
information. And then I would just kind of like dabble in masculine and feminine energy. I hadn't really um, found this true niche yet. Mm -hmm. And then I having people coming to me asking for this, you know, intuitive guidance. And it was almost like this dance between the clients and and what I was, you know, providing them the information where it kind of just started narrowing down. And I started kind of seeing these repeating themes with people. And I started understanding, you know, and then of course I went into like Young's work, right. With the anima and anima. Um, and started delving into that a little bit more because of the reflections that I was having from the clients that I was working with, but I was seeing these repeating themes. I was seeing these um, patterns really that we all go through as we are working to do that shadow work with the anima and animus and then ascend really those inner archetypes and clear out those inner child wounds and recode um, like our inner masculine and inner feminine. And it really always goes back to child because that's, you know, when we form the ego identity. Hmm. So will you, so Vanessa and I know what you mean when you say anima and animus, we come from a Jungian background as well, but we, you break down because I think a lot of times people sort of are really resistant to masculine and feminine. They think you're speaking in terms of gender. A lot of times, will you break down for someone who has no idea what you mean when you're talking about masculine and feminine dynamics, what you mean? Yes, absolutely. So for me, and because I've, you know, fused it with the spiritual understanding because of the people in the communities that I was working with, um, I really see it as energy, Mm -hmm. um, more than the archetype. So that's kind of like the traditional understanding is that we all have, whether you're a man or a woman, we have an inner masculine and feminine. And usually um, if your predominant external energy, you know, how you're showing up, in the Mm. reality is masculine, then you have this inner feminine. And if your predominant, you know, energy is feminine, then you have this internal masculine. Did I say the same thing? Nope. (laughs) Okay. Um, Great. So, you know, the, the way that that works is that inner archetype or energy, whatever you want to call it, is then what is informing, you know, the reality that you're creating in your external. Mm. It's all about frequency. So when you begin to align it with this understanding that, you know, we can co-create our reality, right, based off of the healing work, the inner work that we're constantly doing, it becomes um, almost like this blueprint. Mm -hmm. So the inner masculine energy or your inner feminine energy is the blueprint for the types of relationships, the types of jobs, the types of situations and environments that you call into your life to almost, you know, reinforce where you're at. Mm-hmm. So that is how I see it. Um, and it, it goes a little bit beyond like the typical understanding of like that you have an inner masculine or inner feminine, because it gets to this level of like understanding it from an energetic place. So we understand that we can actually um, manipulate our reality in a sense by doing this inner work. And it gives more of an incentive, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, we want to work on ourselves, right? But to understand that the external is a reflection of that internal relationship that we have really like ups the game here, right? And like gives you more motivation to do that work. And would you say it's like for people, for people that are still questioning, like what, what is the, like, why do I need to understand this? Like, what is it, you know, about this information that is important for me to know, like what my kind of inner, whether I lean more masculine or lean more feminine, like what's the purpose of this, you know? And I, I know for me, it's like the way I think about it. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts. It's just like, it's important for you to understand that. So for me, for example, I definitely tend to be more masculine presenting. Um, and I have a whole reason why, and there's my story and all the things, right. But so, because I know that a lot of my journey has been around really working to uncover and embrace my feminine because it's, it's like my, my weaker energy, if you will, it's, it's been left dormant, um, you know, and I think purposely, right. For survival and all the things. And so, you know, I I guess in your words, what would you say is like the purpose of somebody actually deeply understanding, not just how they present, but also understanding how to maybe show up differently or embrace things or, or, um, yeah. I don't know if I'm, I'm being very, un- I feel like I'm being very unclear because this topic is so interesting to me, but I'm having a hard time even articulating like what I want to know from you. Cause you're so knowledgeable of it. 
Well, Vanessa, I think that's an excellent question. And I, I'm, I'm totally understanding where you're coming from. Um, you know, and it's different depending on, you know, what, which energy you're balancing, mm -hmm. but definitely, you know, I, I tend to tell clients, like when we're working on integrating that feminine energy, which a lot of us have dormant inside of us because of the way that uh, civilization is right now, right? Mm -hmm. Social structures have rewarded this, this masculine energy that actually has become um, a distorted version because yes. it's not in balance with the feminine. Mm -hmm. So it's all about work, 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 hustle, hustle, hustle. Um, you get everything by, you know, like what can you show in the physical reality instead of going inward. Mm -hmm. And this is what, you know, what causes um, a lot of like mental health issues, right? Because we believe that we can just do things in the external. We could just go through all the motions and that we don't have to take care of the inner, the inside, right? Mm -hmm. As long as the outside looks good, as long as we're presenting ourselves it looks, and it looks good, it's that mask, right? That comes, um, that we begin to wear. And connecting with your feminine energy gets you into this place of flow, get you into this place of trust and patience and understanding that we do pull things into our life based off of our frequency and our inner work. So we don't have to hustle, 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 and we don't have to have no time for rest. And we don't have to, you know, be evaluated by our external appearance, our external, our titles, um, you know, like what we've done in institutions, all of that. It allows us to get more into this like playful nature that a lot of mm -hmm. us lost really early on mm -hmm. because of, you know, the way the school system is really, because it was all based on this external performance. So as you connect to the feminine, when you balance that back out, you get into this intrinsic motivation, mm -hmm. which I believe is so important when we're working on becoming autonomous. Because if everything is based on external validation, we get caught in these loops of people pleasing. And that's very often what I see when we are operating from just, you know, predominantly masculine energy without this integration of the feminine. Mm -hmm. So when it comes down to it, like really what I'm helping people to do is to become sovereign. Mm -hmm. become the co-creator of their life to take their power back. That's why we do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love the way that you are able to articulate so beautifully, because I think that the challenging thing about the feminine is that it isn't necessarily linear. A lot of it is so intuitive and, you know, just like what I feel in my body and like what I'm tapping into from source energy. And so a lot of times it can be really difficult to put a name on that. And I do think that we are a society that doesn't value that, right? Like what can't be sort of seen on an external level or can't be named isn't what we value. And certainly the feminine um, isn't what we have been conditioned to value. Um, and so I'm curious, what I love about your work, Laura, is that I feel like you speak to it on a like collective level. This is what's happening for us collectively. And the more that I understand these dynamics, I feel like we're being called to heal these aspects of ourselves in order to save ourselves because our disconnection from the feminine is what is making us capable of destroying mother earth is making it that we are so disconnected from one another, right? Because the connection is the feminine elements of what of ourselves, right? Um, and so will you speak a little bit about like your weekly like check-ins with the masculine and feminine dynamic? Like, are you, are you checking into like what you feel like all of the masculine energy is collectively or just like, how does that work exactly? Will and also just give us a little bit that? for people who don't know, like what it is that you do weekly so that they understand kind of like what that looks like. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is definitely probably the most difficult part of my work to explain because mm. there's probably a lot of stigmas around it. And I know for me coming from like, you know, like the institutions and all that, this was so hard for me to shift into mm. that mind around because I really was hesitant um, to go there. Right. Um, but so what I do is I do tap into collective energies. So I do feel and see these patterns um, intuitively and I can feel and sense and see, and it also is based on research too, because I do research through, you know, looking at what's going on in, on the world stage um, to get information and feedback. I look at what's happening and how like the collective archetypes are playing out in humanity. Mm -hmm. And it really comes down to this understanding that that 
all the work that we're doing inside of ourselves is then reflected on the world stage Mm -hmm. in our collective reality. So it's like the, the micro informs the macro. So when you begin to understand that, that everything that we're processing, all of the inner work, all that work we're doing um, to, you know, deprogram our own, like, repeating loops is then played out in like our systems, our structures, our, um, you know, it's like everything that we see um, that's playing out in the world stage, then you can begin to understand that there's these like common themes. And there's also like groups of people that are all working together to kind of heal Mm -hmm. um, certain things um, and like tackling certain areas. And what I do each week is I, I tap into the ways that masculine and feminine energy is playing out within us mm-hmm. and then in, in our collective reality. And I give an update and I, I tend to tap into what I feel is, you know, soul groups or soul monads. Um, so it doesn't always resonate with everyone, but I find that, you know, the energy that I collect, that I connect to is pretty broad. So it's like everybody has some sort of aspect of it and can relate in some way. Um, and again, it's like, this was the hardest thing for me to get to, but I also, when I was really young, right? Like when I was writing music, I always found, and I found this really strange that the lyrics that I would write or the song I would write would then, um, show up on the radio, Mm -hmm. like a couple months later. And I'm like, that was the theme that I was just talking about. Mm -hmm. And it it was always mind boggling to me and I couldn't really understand. And it wasn't until I got to this place of, you know, studying spiritual science and understanding oneness, understanding that we're all connected, Mm -hmm. quantum mechanics and all like quantum theory and all Mm -hmm. that. Did I understand that it was because I was tapping into something that is beyond what we can see in the physical reality. And that like, we are all connected almost to this like supercomputer Mm -hmm. on the other side, right. That's like informing all of us and we are playing out these archetypes and we're all doing it together. Um, And it's, it really brings a lot of peace actually Mm -hmm. for me personally, because when I realized that, I mean, I get so much feedback from people like, wow, I'm going through that too. Like amazing. I felt like you were talking to me and it always, I mean, I've been doing this for a while and I'm always shocked. You know, I'm, I'm just, it, it, it brings me a lot of peace to know that we're not alone. Mm-hmm. We're not really doing this alone. A lot of us are working on the same things and it looks different. We're playing it out different but it's energy and it's how we choose to play it out um, really depends on, you know, our, our ego, our conditioning, you know, the families that we were in, the ancestral patterns. But when it really gets down to it, we're all working towards this place of wholeness and love and inner peace. Okay. So this is where this gets like fascinating to me because I do feel like you're like every, every week that I check in, you're like, Danae, this is what your week is going to be. And then like, I go back and I'm like, well, Laura was spot on. Um, and so when you say, did you say soul monads? Yes. Is that right? Okay. So will you say a little bit more about what that means? And I'm just, I'm so fascinated to know how you tap into that. Like, what does that feel like in your body? Will you describe a little bit of what the process of tapping into that is? Yeah, it's, it's definitely for me, I'm experiencing it, right? So I'm experiencing it with everyone else. And what I do is I really move myself just out of ego Mm -hmm. and get to higher perspective, this higher understanding so that I can see not just what I'm experiencing, but then like the broader themes of what I'm experiencing and why it's necessary and what it can do to shift the collective consciousness. So when I kind of like um, pull myself out, that's almost what I do when I'm channeling is I pull myself out from being myopic and just Mm -hmm. looking like me, 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 what's going on with my life? Like, why is this happening to me? And I pull out and I see from this higher perspective, I then can see like these constructs and I can see like how all of these pieces are working together and how we are upgrading archetypes collectively in order to ascend like the entire like humanity, entire collective consciousness. So I know that's still a little out there. It's like, really hard to put this into words because Mm -hmm. it is really with that feminine energy. And I get so many people, it's like every week I get people asking me like, what book can I read on feminine energy? And I'm like, Mm. there's no book really because 
feminine energy isn't structured. It's not the structure and the logic and Mm -hmm. not like hierarchy, like masculine energy. So it's something that is like this like void that Mm -hmm. we tap into we get into this creative place. And the only way I can explain it is, is like, you know, if you sit down and you're about to write something and you go into this place, this void, and it just comes through and you don't know where it comes from, but you feel like it's, it's almost like not from you, right? It's coming from someone else. It's like someone has taken your hand and is writing for you. I feel that all of us have experienced that when we're writing or if we were doing art, whatever we do, it's that feeling. It's this feeling of tapping into something that is beyond what you can see and what you can really understand with the mind. Yeah, Yeah, I love that. And I can even see how, you know, when I work with clients and I I talk a lot about, um, you know, our loss of, being able to tap into our intuition and how I do a lot of work with codependency in particular codependent behaviors and, and, you know, symptoms and such. And so much of it is a return to intuition, right? Because we have been conditioned to listen external and then that becomes right. It's, it's an other oriented personality structure. Everything is outside of self versus inside of self. And, and so much of the work is returning to being able to listen to inside of self, right? Turning that intuition dial back up so I can actually hear what it's saying. And when I explain to people, it's like, again, what, what books can I read? Like, how can I, well, how can I increase my intuition? Like people want that very kind of fast A plus B equals C kind of answer. And so many times with my work, it's like, I can't give you that. All you can do is put one foot in front of the other. You have to feel into it, right? It's like you do the thing. And then once you do the thing, you have to sit with the feeling of the thing. And then what is the feeling telling you? Or if you're about to do the thing, stop, don't do the thing. What's the feeling before you do the thing, right? And so Mm -hmm. it's, you're right. It's like a nuanced thing. And it's really hard to actually put into words. It's something that people really have to just feel. And that that's tough. I think when you're on the other side, trying to explain it to somebody, right. As like a, I I mean, I guess I'll say healer. Um, people, people struggle, I think, to wrap their head around it, but I think you, you do a really good job of kind of making it understood. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I love that, Vanessa. That's exactly, you know, what we're doing is we're leading through the feeling, Mm -hmm. um, rather than thinking, thinking, and we don't want to just stay in the feeling, right? That's mm-hmm. what is all of the, the whole idea of union, right? Is yeah, that we balance. take these feeling and we translate it into some sort of way to demonstrate it logically. Mm-hmm. And it's like all the like great minds before us, like the creative geniuses, like Einstein and all, all of these people who are able to tap into their intuition and then put it into some sort of structured way mm-hmm. to, you know, represent it. Like that is true union. That's inner union. That's a really way to, I mean, when we think about Einstein, so many of the ways that we think about him as an example is very like, we look at him as this like left brain, logical mathematician, but so much of the work that he did was actually intuitive. And he he spoke so much to the intuitive nature of the work that he was doing and how he was getting some of these things through, you know, visions and, and feeling sense. And like, if you actually read, I mean, I'm sure you have, but it's like, I have this conversation. Who was I talking to the other day about this? Where I was like, it wasn't actually all left brain. He was actually in a lot of ways, a medium. It's kind of crazy when you think about it like that. Yeah. No, I mean, I feel like he's someone who talks about law of attraction so clearly in his totally. work and that like, you either believe that we live in a friendly universe and that things are playing out for mm-hmm. you or we don't. I feel like that's one of his famous quotes. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, I, I, I feel like people, you know, tend to just really think, you know, we put people in a box, right? right. And mm-hmm. we exactly. see that like science or, you know, you know, the work that you guys do, like therapy or everything is this, we put this into thinking that it's just a logical mind and it's not, it's so intuitive. And it's, it's all about honoring that and speaking about it too. Cause I feel like so many people are doing it Mm-hmm. but they don't know they're doing it. Mm-hmm. So the more that we talk about the feminine, the more that we bring this like awareness that we are tapping into these, um, you know, like we're channeling, we're channeling yeah. information just like Einstein was And to be a thought leader. The only way you can be a thought leader is to be in union with your feminine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's no way to download information that hasn't been seen here yet, unless you're able to go into that place of the unknown. So in order to solve any of the problems that we're having here, you know, with humanity, and we're kind of reaching this point where we're breaking down, which is a lot of like what I'm leading people towards, you know, fixing, right, and repairing. 
um, you have to tap into this ability of like not having to find everything in a book because if it's all then you know processed by yeah. someone else, it's it's not going to allow for greater solutions. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, mm-hmm. So it's um like this inner sovereignty and and um yeah, I, I would love if you would speak a little bit more about, you said somewhere that 2022 is going to be the year of the divine masculine. And I feel like so much of your work has not only inspired me to, God, you know, hold the masculine and men really differently. A lot of my work had just been so like, I am reclaiming this feminine energy. And I feel like some of the things I've heard you say have really encouraged me to know, but a big part of this work is tapping into my own inner protector and my own um, sovereignty through some of my masculine energy that is healthy masculine energy, not sort of the the wounded masculine energy that I was conditioned by a lot of the women in my, my family and um, the people around me to embody, but a different type of masculine. Um, but I'm really, I'm really moved by how much you're speaking to like this rising of healthy masculine energy. And you saying that like next year is going to be all about the masculine. Will you speak to that a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. That definitely came up today. (laughs) Um, 2022 is huge because we're definitely seeing this breakdown. Um, we can see it on the world stage too. Um, so if you're, you know, you're sensitive to energy and when I say you're sensitive to energy, also, I mean, like you're sensitive to patterns, Mm -hmm. you're noticing that there's certain patterns and there's certain themes. And if you've studied archetypes, like if you've studied, even if, you know, just like Greek mythology, Um, And you can kind of see and sense like how our world leaders are maybe playing out some of those roles Mm -hmm. that we see in mythology. Um, You know, and you start picking up on that, you begin to see that we're kind of going through this collective dismantling of what I would call the toxic patriarchy. Um, And that is, you know, when the masculine kind of took the role of the leader, right, but left the feminine on the side, the soul on the side. So it was just all ego based. And we're seeing this shift because so many people have dedicated their lives to doing this inner work. So many people are waking up. So many people are doing the shadow work. And I know you guys see it with the work that you do. It's like, you know, people are really wanting to reflect. They want to do the self they want to be better and the more people that do that just like I was saying before it's like we're projectors right everything everyone is a projector you know when you look at human design everyone is everything that they're doing internally then informs the external so as all of these people are doing this cleanup work and they're wanting to do better we see then all the old systems that were based off of toxicity starting to collapse and break down So part of this work for those of us who may have been more in our feminine energy and we had like a mistrust of the system. um, And I think this is where a lot of that like uh, conspiracy theory stuff comes in, right? Because it's like when you're deep in your feminine, you don't trust these these external systems because you know that they're a a toxic representation of the masculine. Um, But instead of trying to go out and like, you know, get on the streets and like protest or do all these things, I I think that is part of it. But what I really do feel that what we need to do is we need to build that trust with our own inner masculine. Mm -hmm have to recode those archetypes that we created in childhood where we're like the masculine is not safe I can't trust him he's going to hurt me because then when we believe that if we are co-creators that's what we experience we're experiencing that in our reality a lot of feminines are doing this work now of beginning to trust that the masculine can be safe Mm -hmm can be a provider, can be a protector. And what that does is then that shifts everything from operating from this toxic masculinity because we were taking the toxic masculine power when we were reinforcing it and saying the masculine's not safe. The masculine's not worth The masculine's gonna hurt me. When we start saying no and we believe in our inner masculine and we start taking our own power back, then that starts playing out in real in our collective reality. And I'm noticing so many feminines doing that inner work that we're working on shifting. It's like this tipping point now. And then we're actually seeing it play out with systems and structures and people. You know, people that are in mostly their masculine energy are really starting to step up and wanting to protect the soul Mm -hmm. instead of fight against the soul. 
It's going to be emotional. I love, I love thinking of it as this masculine energy wanting to protect the soul. And I feel like, you know, there is something in the way that you speak to it as soul versus ego, because I feel like there's just so much resistance when I speak to things in the context of masculine and feminine, I'll be working with couples and I'll be talking about, um, you know, how I, and I'm curious if you find this to be the case that a lot of times, um, while we as women are deeply in our wounded masculine energy, I find a lot of the couples that I work with, the men are just like really in some wounded feminine energy. And that is really, really challenging to speak to. And so I try to find ways that feel a little bit more digestible to speak to you. This is a little bit what's playing out here and why there's not polarity and attraction between the two of you. But um, I love, you know, this protection of the soul from this, this energy of the, the ego, the, the um, physical world, you know, protecting the soul within us. Just really, I feel really moved by that, Laura. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that you said that because it's like, you know, the ego, it goes into defensiveness. We all do with mm -hmm. ego. And because of gender, we all go to this place immediately. Like it's people just like lock up sometimes when you're talking about masculine and feminine. So yeah. when we express it in different ways, and we can explain it in different ways because it's it's really masculine ego, feminine soul. Um, you can also look at it as the head and the heart. Mm -hmm. You can also look at it as the left and the right brain, as Vanessa was talking about. There's so many different ways to see it. And it's like when you, I, I spoke French when I was little, like I, I, I lost most of it. Um, my family, I had family, it was French Canadian, but I studied it, right? And it's like, you know, everything is like masculine, like everything is like masculine or feminine. Um, that actually is truth, right? So it's when I've gotten to this place of really understanding like masculine and feminine energy within myself, I can actually look at things that are occurring or um, like places and say, okay, this is definitely masculine energy. This is feminine energy. It's not gender. Yeah. Um, and I remember always like thinking it was so weird. Like, why would you assign masculine to a thing or an object, um, a, you know, in a different language? And now I understand why, because we are like the whole world is coded that way. Mm -hmm. Everything. And it, there's even countries like countries that are more in their masculine energy and countries that are more in their feminine energy. It, it's amazing when you start looking at that way and you can remove yourself from gender. So the U.S. is more in our masculine energy at this point in time. Wounded, We're wounded working on it, right? <laughs> Maybe some wounded Absolutely. masculine energy. Well, and I think too, That's it's really like funny. when I'm thinking about what you were saying about couples today, you know, and obviously we've had conversations about how this shows up in my dynamic and, and it's, it shows up in so many couples dynamics. Um, mm -hmm. It's like trying to help people understand that the way you are showing up is not wrong right? Mm -hmm. The way you were showing up is again, what I was saying earlier, it's like your conditioning, it's, you know, it's survival, it's how you were raised, all these things. It's, it's patterns again, you know, just to, to use your terms, but it's, um, it's like, how do I tap into the energy within myself that is actually, I don't want to use the word weaker energy, but let's just use weaker energy because if I do that, and if you do that, my partner, then what we're actually doing is we're not just finding union within ourselves, but we're also finding we're also finding union within the partnership, right? Because if we're always functioning from these two different poles, I, and I am not really articulating this clearly today, but I know we talk about this idea of like, um, is it polarity? Is that the word that uh, Wineland mm -hmm. uses a lot about like that's where the attraction kind of comes from? It's like I, mm -hmm. I have a hard time with the polarity concept because it's like. I get that that's what the attraction comes from. And yet also we need to tap into union, I think sometimes in order to find that attraction too. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's a big part of the work that I do mm -hmm. um, when I'm intuitively coaching people is, you know, we are transitioning mm -hmm. out of these codependent structures because yeah. really that's how relationships, that's what we saw was a, like the ideal relationship really up until this point right. because people really have stepped into their sovereignty they really have not so we've 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 been programmed to think like I become the ideal partner and then I attract the mm -hmm. like opposite 
Yes. And it's more about becoming your, uh, becoming into this inner marriage, this inner union and self balancing out your own masculine and feminine energies, and then calling in a partner who's done the same, which I like to call your match Um, match. I'm sorry. Frequency match. Mm -hmm. Instead of calling in somebody who then is going to complete the, the other end of the polarity. Yeah. I could, because that's a good way to and that's how we've operated for so long and it, it's really disempowered both masculines and feminines mm-hmm. yeah i i feel like understanding these dynamics or at least starting to has completely shifted the way that i view working with couples that i view like what relationships should be i feel like it is always someone coming into our world that is sort of matching the frequency of what we are attempting to heal i just i believe that now i don't think it's about like this person can't meet my needs and i need someone who's like i'm all right like i nope <laughs> like this is about you coming into integration with yourself and i think when we get to that space that you're talking of where i am a little bit more balanced out with both of these dynamics because i feel like at first i was so like oh this is because i I just really need to embrace um, feminine energy. Like this is what was really missing in my marriage. And I realized like, no, it was, it was that like, I need to be integrated in both or I will be attracting someone who is still in like that wounded energy within themselves. That is what I will draw in. Like the, the part that I'm missing yeah. will still be what I'm drawing. But then let me ask you this. So if you're already in a partnership and you're doing that work, right. Then, then are you drawing if you're doing that inner union work is then the idea that you are almost offering up or living from a space of more union. And so you are allowing it or showcasing it to your partner in a way that maybe becomes more tempting for them to do the same, right? Because it's, if it's not about like, Oh, I'm going to draw in a new partner that's going to help me, you know, that's going to, that's going to do the energy work that I've been doing. And we're going to kind of be that frequency match. I guess Mm -hmm. if you're already partnered, right. For those of those people listening who are in that place, it's like, well, if you are doing this work in inner frequency work in yourself, the idea would be with any self-betterment work, actually, that if you're living from that space, people are going to want to join you there most likely. Absolutely. And I think that's, it's really important to understand that another reason why we do this is not to have just the ideal relationship, really. It's a relationship with self, but then what also that does is that pulls in our purpose. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's, that's why that's, you know, the real reason to do this. It's, it's like the relationships that come in are just kind of the icing on the cake. Um, When your ego and your soul are aligned, the work that you start doing becomes like the soul guided work, right? Right. So the ego workhorse, the workhorse that has to work the nine to five to survive, to, you know, have food, water, shelter, um, then becomes uh, aligned with the feminine. So then the work you do becomes fun. It becomes exciting. It becomes fulfilling. So that's another big part of this. So if you're in a relationship, um, you know, and you still are feeling unfulfilled, a lot of times it's because you haven't yet stepped into your purpose. And, you know, I I work with a lot of people with stepping into their purpose too. So it's not all about like attracting, you know, your frequency match in a person, but it's also about attracting in your soul family. Um, Because Mm. a lot of times we get stuck in what I call, you know, karmic loops. And when we're in these karmic loops, we're with people who are then reflecting back to us our our inner wounding and our programming Mm -hmm. that we have you know, when from our childhood. And as we dismantle this, we deprogram this and we align more with our feminine energy and our masculine begins to, um, you know, be t- protect our feminine, right? So our soul and our ego are coming into this alignment. We then call in like soul aligned relationships, mm-hmm. romantic relationships, like work partnerships. And these are the people that are there to help you support to help support you to step into your highest potential. Yeah. I love it. I just feel like it all feels so empowering as I listen to you. You know, I think there's, there's a way that we can hold whatever the challenge is that feels like really, you know, defeating and, um, you know, like someone else has this power over me or because my partner won't do this, I'm unable to do this. And there's just so much about like bringing it back to a space of our own sovereignty. Yeah. That's like such a reclamation of power. And I just, I always feel really <laughs> empowered listening to your messages. Thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think about like where we're headed, what is, I don't know, like, what do we, what do we all need to be doing? What, what do we do? Like the, what do we do? How do we save us? What do you think? Where are we going? Right. I know. Yes. Um, 
it, it feels like we're really at this um, void. Mm. You know, I feel like so many people have gone through so much reflection um, with in the pandemic and everything with a slowdown. So many people went within. Mm-hmm. So there was all that recoding, all that, that shadowy stuff. Lots of people had dark nights of the soul. Um, so now it's like, we've gone through all that darkness. We're still, you know, working on clearing it out. So now we're getting at this point. So what do we want the world to look like? Mm-hmm. What do we want our relationships to look like? What do we want our, our purpose to look like? How do we want to show up? And it's, it's almost like we're getting to this point where like, we're being handed like the pen to rewrite our story. And I just, I feel that with the entire collective consciousness, I feel that there's a lot of leaders that are stepping up that are going to, you know, show the way. And uh, when I say a leader, a conscious leader is somebody who demonstrates this through living their own life, right? Not by dictating what people are supposed to do, by going through the pain, expressing that they're going through the pain, learning from it and transforming that darkness into something that can then um, fill them up and also, you know, spill out over you know, through their cup and, and help others. So we've got a lot of conscious leaders coming into power right now, internal power. Mm -hmm. Um, And I believe that this is where we're going to start seeing, you know, things really shifting. I talk about the age of Aquarius a lot. So this is the time where we are really, a lot of people are stepping into their sole purpose. Mm -hmm. So we're not like a slave for the old system anymore. Mm -hmm. We're, uh, co-creating our reality and we're understanding that like there's certain things that we came here to do like there's there's everyone like I and most people that I talk to you know they can go back to their childhood and usually around like eight nine ten there's something that they really felt deep within themselves that they were meant to do but because of ego conditioning ancestral patterns people pleasing feeling disempowered self-betrayal all of that they pushed it aside because I can't do that. Right. I can't do that. It's, it's, it's never going to work out. Mm -hmm. And we're finally getting to this point where I feel like, you know, it's like a lot of people have lost jobs. Oh, it's just so much is happening where it's getting to the point where like, I might as well take the leap Mm -hmm. because the old system, the old way of living isn't working anymore. And I feel that so many people are reaching that point that we're able to create pretty much a new earth now. Ah, speaking my language. I love it so much. Um, I feel like I could just listen to you talk about it for the rest of the day, Laura, but um, we have some questions that we asked all of our guests that I want to make sure we have time to get to. Um, so the first question we ask everyone is, who have been your greatest teachers? Your, um, the people that have impacted you the most along your journey, whether they're people you've known or just people whose work has really influenced you. Yeah, so I think I I brought up some, you know, Rudolf Steiner's work was um, really helpful for me. Um, I also, for me, music is really big. Mm. So, um, you know, I I probably won't call out any specific artists, but, you know, it's just like music in general. Mm -hmm. Um, So I've always been connected to, it's interesting, you know, like hip hop and R&B. So I have this like very like intellectual part of me that, you know, like, to read about Einstein and all of, you know, this. And, um, but then also my feminine finds a lot of information in um, music. So like yeah. I will call artists like Erica Badu, yes. um, Angelo, <laughs> some of these people who were tapping into feminine energy for so long, right? Mm-hmm. And they were downloading this information. So that's when people ask me, where can I find a book? I'm like, listen to some music. So listen to some music. To- find a poet that that you resonate with um so you know that's those are people that have influenced me um I also feel that really when it comes down to it it's just like everybody that I've worked with and everyone that I call into my life teaches me something yeah and, and I've gotten to this point where I just don't, I don't look for just like the people with the title the you know, the great minds, like I see, and I learn something from every single person that comes into my reality. And once I got into that place where I'm not just like looking for like this, this intellectual um, person that's going to teach me, that's like a teacher, I need a guru. Mm-hmm. And I started seeing like every single person as my guru mm-hmm. um, reality. Totally. Love that. 
Love it. Um, okay, so the next question is, what do you find yourself doing when you find yourself in a state of flow? So what is that thing that kind of, you could blink your eyes and an entire day goes by? Yeah, so for me, um, definitely when I'm writing. Mm -hmm. That's when I just, you know, I'm, I'm really in flow when I'm writing. Um, also when I'm doing, strangely, you know, when I'm doing these videos, like these collective updates that I do, um, at first it was very challenging because mm -hmm. switching from just writing everything out to then speaking was really difficult. Um, but now it's like every week I do these collective updates and I'm just in flow when they come out. You know, I just said that this last one I had, I, I have a slight concussion. I had an accident <laughs> I fell, and I'm like, how is this going to go? You know, I'm like totally not with it. Um, but it's just so natural. Yeah. for me to speak, even like with these podcasts and the interviews that I do, it's just, I feel in flow when I'm doing my work now, yeah. which is amazing. Love yeah. I mean, I love, I love when you are witnessing someone who is so in alignment with what they're supposed to be doing and having you speak to it. It's like, yeah, absolutely. You are in flow and, um, it's beautiful. Um, yeah. so what breaks your heart? I think that for me, one of the, my biggest struggles is because I can see people's highest potential. That's mm -hmm. something that I really into when I see people looping through self-betrayal, self-sabotage, yeah. um, that, that hurts, yeah. that, that, that breaks my heart. And, um, that's, that's something that I'm learning to deal with too, because I feel that I can also get into this place of like wanting to control, which mm -hmm. then is like that distorted feminine, like I see your full potential, like you got to get it together. And I have to understand that that's their journey, not mine. Yeah. So that's what breaks my heart. Mm. Tough lesson for a lot of us to learn. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And the final for question is a very heavy one. What is your favorite food? Oh, okay. Um, that one actually is tough. <laughs> <laughs> but I, like, we get that a lot, which is funny. <laughs> like, I don't know. That's the hardest question you've asked. <laughs> Okay. I'm like, like right now I'm just like really into smoothies. I just, I love fruit. Fruit is like my favorite food. Mm -hmm. And so I know I have to throw in some greens in there, but like <laughs> I could probably, I think it's called a fruitarian people who just eat fruit all the time. <laughs> I feel like people have maybe died from doing that. So of course <laughs> we're not that. advocating <laughs> becoming a fruitarian, but <laughs> don't do it. Not. I probably wouldn't try it, but like I'm curious because I love it so much. I feel like maybe I try, I could try it for a week. I don't know. Oh, well, amazing. Well, Laura, I gotta be honest. I really wanted you to come on because I wanted to share you and your wisdom with our listeners. And I just, um, I'm really grateful for the work that you're doing. I feel like you are such a powerful leader, sort of ushering us into this, this Aquarian age and this new earth that we are, are stepping into. So thank you for what you're doing. I, I am so moved and I feel like it's been such a, an ascension journey for me over this last year, just like really sort of allowing spirit to be the space that is leading and I've, I've been listening hard <laughs> to your videos and tapping into your wisdom as I ascend. So thank you for the support with that. I, I really, I, everyone should go and follow Laura right now. If you're not following her on Instagram, her account's amazing and all of your videos are phenomenal. So thank you. Yeah. And we'll post all that stuff, obviously on the write up, but if you want to, why don't you tell people where they can find you and connect with you? Yeah. So you can find me on Instagram. Um, my handle is at Laura, the Woken Mind. Um, I also have a website, thewokenmind.com, and I'm on YouTube with my weekly updates. Um, and that channel is Laura the Woken Mind. Awesome. And people can book one-on-one -on -one sessions with you as well, right? Yes, yes, I do one-on-one -on -one sessions, and I'm going to be doing group coaching in the near future too. Awesome. So. Ooh, we'll be looking Thank up for so that. <laughs> yeah, and I appreciate you coming out and breaking it down for me because as somebody who does tend to be more in the masculine, it's it's it does help for my brain to have more structure around things. And so when you do that, I feel like I can soften into the more feminine kind of felt understanding of something. So I appreciate that. But I feel yeah, like she's able to yeah. speak to it in a very linear fashion. <laughs> it's like she does it beautifully. Yeah, yeah. that's what I mean. I was like, I need say, that. I'm like Vanessa, the whole time I'm like, you, you're, you're tapping into it perfectly. It's, it's so many times we're, we're doing it and we don't even know that we're doing it. Mm. And we're just Sorry, all doing life. it. In 
(laughs) You're doing it. You just don't know that you're doing it. You can it. Yeah. I'm so grateful for the work that both of you do. Um, We all work together. We're like puzzle pieces and we have different ways and and people have different ways of processing and understanding things. And and essentially we're kind of doing the all the, the same thing. Yes really doing the same thing. We're healing and we're ascending the Mm -hmm. plan. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Thank you for being here, Laura. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you so much.